As soon as Jesus and his disciples arrived for the Last Supper, they got to arguing about who should have the most important places at the table, and they figured that the one who was the most important in the kingdom of heaven should be the one who would get the most important seat at the table. Well, now, I believe that the master said that I had the keys to the kingdom, huh? so I guess I would be the one with the most important seat. Well, I'm the oldest, and I believe that I'm the most important. Now, Andrew, that dog won't hunt. I'm the most educated person in this entire house. Oh, my goodness sake, let's stop this bickering. Now, the values of heaven may be quite different from the values of earth. In the kingdom of heaven, the greatest may be young John here. Yeah? Now, boys, I will show you how to determine who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now, when Jesus said that, he took off his cloak and put a towel around himself, and then he got a basin of water and a washcloth, and he walked up to Peter and told him that he, Jesus, wanted to wash Peter's feet. Oh, no, Master, you're, you're not going to wash my feet. I, I, I'm not worthy. I, I should, I'm not even worthy to wash your feet. If you will not allow me to wash your feet, then I will have nothing to do with you. Oh, well, well in that case, if, uh, if it means that much to you, uh, wash my whole body from head to foot. No, that won't be necessary. You are clean, but not all of you. And then, one by one, Jesus washed each one of the disciples' feet. And he dried them off with a towel, and then he stood up. Now do you see what I've done? The greatest among you is the one who will be the least among you, for the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The greatest among you is the one who will serve the others as his servant. Upon those words, Peter just headed for the lowest end of the table, because he wanted to be first by being last. And John, the beloved, sat right next to Jesus, where he could just kind of lean against him. Judas sat on the other side, and the other disciples sat at any place that was available to them. Once the foot washing and the seating arrangements were settled, Jesus and his disciples settled down to their Passover meal. It was a typical Passover meal with bitter herbs and unleavened bread and such. Curiously, the Bible doesn't mention there being any lamb at the Passover meal. Some folks say that it's because Jesus was the lamb. The meal went swimmingly without a hitch until well into the evening and then Jesus said something that threw cold water on the whole affair. Tonight, one of you will betray me. It's rather striking that not one of the disciples pointed the finger at Judas, suspecting him. Every one of them were asking, Well, who is it? Is it I? They looked into their own hearts, and they saw reasons to doubt themselves. Now John was still sitting pretty close to Jesus, and so Jesus whispered to him, The traitor will be the one to whom I give the sop of bread. On those words, Jesus dipped the bread into some bitter herbs, and he gave the bread to Judas. From John's reaction to this, Judas realized that the bread had been a signal. Judas had been made. Is it I, Lord? You said it. Then Judas jumped up from his seat, and he ran out of the room faster than a hound dog with a burr under his tail. What you're about to do, do quickly. The disciples didn't really know what to make of Judas leaving the room all that quickly, and Jesus telling him to do it quickly. They kind of figured that since Judas controlled the money, then Jesus was sending him on an errand and that he needed to do it quickly. So they went on enjoying their Passover meal. With Judas out of the room, Jesus instituted a new tradition. He broke off pieces of unleavened bread and one by one gave the pieces to his disciples. 
This is my body, which is given for you. As oft as you do this, do in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a goblet of wine. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you. And each one of the disciples who were present drank from the cup. At the end of the evening, Jesus and his disciples sang a hymn together, and to show John Mark's father that they appreciated the hospitality and the meal, they, according to the custom of the day, wadded up their napkins and stuffed them into their bowls. Oh, by the way, in those days, if they did not appreciate the hospitality or the meal, and they wanted to show that they would never come that way again, they would neatly fold the napkin and place it to the side of the bowl. I mentioned that custom because later on in this story, you're going to hear of another napkin. Once they had sung the hymn and stuffed their napkins into the bowls, they left the room going down the outside stairway, and they stopped at the foot of the stairs right outside of John Mark's bedroom window. From the things that Jesus was telling his disciples, John Mark knew that something really heavy was going down, and it was going to happen very soon. As Jesus and his disciples left the house, John Mark did not have enough time to jump out of bed and get his clothes on, so he wrapped himself up in a sheet and tried to follow them as well as he could at a safe distance. From that point, he followed them all the way to the Mount of Olives. 